Man, fever in a funk house on Capitol Hill, y'all. It has been absolutely crazy. Uh, yesterday, the House approved this uh, NDAA bill, real estate military bill. Y'all, normally this just f flows like butter. When it passed out of committee, it passed 58 to 1 out of committee. But once it got out, oh, the Freedom Caucus and the hardcore crazy right bigoted, right wing bigots, they got uh, involved. And so then they wanted to put in there attacking abortion. They wanted to put in there attacking woke in the military. And so it passed on the party line vote. Uh, and it's the U.S. Department again. Uh, and so it's called the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, and then it's just stupid. I mean, just just nonsensical how crazy these right wingers are yesterday. Woo, man. Congressman Stephen Horsford and Congressman Matt Gates got into it on the floor of the House. There is a time in every debate where everything has been said, but not yet by everyone. And that may be where we are in the DEI debate, but what I bring to the House now is the most fulsome amendment to completely remove DEI from the DOD. And even if my amendment doesn't pass, I want my colleagues to know that this NDAA in the base bill takes a meat cleaver to DEI. And the amendments that we have adopted uh, in the last round of voting have certainly ensured that DEI, regardless of the passage or not of my amendment, will not be a principal feature of our military service if this bill becomes law, and that would be a great thing for our military. That said, it's important to note that in the name of DEI, our military has done some pretty strange things. Secretary Austin, in his first act, ordered a 24-hour stand down so that everyone could reflect on their extremism. The reality is even majority minority units in the military found this divisive. They complained to my office and certainly it did not create a more lethal force. Also, in the name of DEI, we've hired some rather strange people in the government. There's one DEI officer named Calissa Wing, and she actually, if you can believe this, worked in the DEI's uh, uh, department at DODOA, the education system within DOD, and she put out the following inclusive tweet. I'm so exhausted at these white folks in these professional development sessions. This lady actually had the caudacity to say that black people can be racist too. I had to stop the session and give Karen the business. This, this was the person that we had hired to create a more inclusive environment, and I think it's indicative of the inherently divisive culture that has permeated radical racial ideology. My amendment gives us the opportunity to pull it up by the root, and I hope my colleagues support it. I, I would add this, this final point before yielding back. We have standards in the military that allow the military to expel racists and white supremacists completely in the absence of DEI programs. We've had those standards in the military for quite some time. And so even if my amendment were be to become law, I don't want anyone in the body to think that we would be stuck with people in the military that didn't meet long-standing pre-existing standards of personal conduct. And with that, I reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from Virginia. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Virginia seek recognition? I, re I rise to claim the time in opposition to the amendment, and I yield one and a half minutes to, to Mr. Horsford. The gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong opposition to this amendment. Mr. Speaker, the previous speaker, the uh, maker of this amendment, talked about being exhausting. This issue that he has brought before this body and the committee is exhausting. Just this week, the sponsor of this amendment called diversity, equity, and inclusion in the military a, quote, failed experiment. He has called it cancerous. Just this week, a senator from Alabama stated that it was his opinion that white nationalists are not necessarily racist and refused to denounce white nationalists serving in the military. All of this with the backdrop of the same senator holding up hundreds of military nominations, which is actively hurting our national security, something that this NDAA bill would address. To what end? The, the U.S. Marine Corps does not have a confirmed commandant as we speak. And yet, just an hour ago, on this very floor, one of the members on the other side of this body said his amendment, quote, had nothing to do whether 
colored people or black people can serve, unquote. Mr. Speaker, these comments show exactly why we need diversity, equity, and inclu inclusion initiatives. Every day, our military grows more diverse, more and more reflecting the diversity of our nation. This amendment does nothing to address the recruitment shortfalls that our services are facing, and instead, it will only make it more difficult to recruit Americans on diverse backgrounds, representing the true makeup of our nation. What are you so afraid of? Why do you keep bringing these divisive issues to the body of this floor? You are out of order. You are exhausting this. The gentleman is no longer recognized. The gentleman is no longer recognized. Woman from Virginia Reserves. I reserve. Excuse me, a point from, of order, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. No, Mr. Speaker, I've, I've made a point of order. You have to rule on the point of order. The gentleman will state his point of order. The gentleman has an obligation to address the chair, not other members. He did not do that. He was out of order, violating the decorum of the House. The gentleman has not stopped or start, stated a proper point of order. A parliamentary like to... inquiry, then. I seek recognition to make a parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman will state his parliamentary, parliamentary What is the question? parliamentary mechanism that requires an individual to address the chair? Because if it's not that, we can address each other. Let's do that for the rest of the debate. The chair will not engage in this dialogue. Would the gentleman like to be recognized for his I want to be minutes? recognized for a parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman is not recognized. Would I'm you not like recognized for a parliamentary inquiry? I'm not recognized for a parliamentary inquiry? show you the idiots on the right. Now, uh, Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader, the Speaker of the House. This is what this fool had to say today. Just focus on the military. Stop using taxpayer money to do their own wokeism. A military cannot defend themselves if you train them in woke. We don't want Disneyland to train our military. We want our men and women in the military to have every defense possible. And that's what our bill does. The money focuses directly on their quality of life and more importantly on the investment. When you sit and look. He lying. And Hakeem Jeffries, he was having none of it. We have to pass the National Defense Authorization Act in order to make sure that our military, the greatest military, in my view, in the history of the world, has everything that it needs to protect the safety and security of the American people. And the National Defense Authorization Act, historically, is a bipartisan legislative effort that has now been hijacked by extreme MAGA Republicans who want to wage their so-called culture war against the men and women of the United States military. You can't make this stuff up. And the only explanation for it is that they are so obsessed with jamming their extreme right-wing ideology down the throats of the American people that extreme mega Republicans are willing to even detonate the ability of our military to do what it needs to do to keep us safe. Here's the thing here. Here's the thing here, uh, Matt and Michael. These are the same Republicans. Let me just be clear. These are the same Republicans who voted against, who voted against getting rid of the white nationalists and Nazis in the military last year. Matt? Uh, I don't know, man. It's this, this, this is all absurd. And it's, it's ridiculous that we pay these people to go and be asinine. I mean, that's what it is. Not only did they vote against that last year, but for Kevin McCarthy to get up and say, we don't want Disneyland training our military, all of it, this is ridiculous. I mean, first off, these are the same people who all the time trumpet the military and why defense is so important. So you would think the one place you might support people feeling more included is if you're going to put a gun in their hand and send them overseas to defend our nation. Right. But this is all about parroting the same rhetoric, the same rhetoric all the time, the same rhetoric that says these brown people and these poor people and these other people are coming to steal your country by trying to make it 
too soft. And the reality is when people feel more included and there's more inclusion in the country, then they're better involved and better contributing. And overall, we all lift. But they don't see it that way, because as you always say, and as is always said on the show, it's about power. So this is a stupid position, especially from this idiot from Florida who I don't know if the investigations have ended, but who should not be opening his mouth at all. He should sit in the corner somewhere and hope he doesn't end up indicted. Uh, but this is asinine, and it doesn't surprise me because they're parroting the same things that we see Republicans saying in the state houses and the same kind of policy that they're pushing all across the country to try to keep us down. This right here was a year ago. This was a year ago, Brianna. House Republicans all vote against neo-Nazi probe of military police. And they're so upset. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Our military is woke. Because they're here's the real deal. Republicans are pissed because they're trying to get rid of their voters in the military. They want racists out of the military. They want them in. And Tyler Tuberville said it. The white national, they're Americans. Right. They tend to pretend, right, that they're progressing. DUI, DEI. And they did affirmative action in universities, and then they take away. They pretend like, oh, we care about not racism, and now it's racist to make sure there's inclusion. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's clear uh, that when there's diversity— Everything is elevated. It's better. But I know that they know that they can't rise to the occasion. And so instead, they try to suppress us. Um, and honestly, we're allowing Florida to spread across the United States and United States way too much. And Gates should be in prison. They do not. Let me be clear. Let me be clear here. Uh, uh, Michael, they don't like black people. Correct. Republicans were happy with the Supreme Court affirmative action decision. They were elated with these uh, uh, these Republican attorney generals uh, uh, sending letter around threatening companies saying we're going to go. Uh, you can't have DEI programs. These people want they're elated with voter suppression. They don't. This is a white nationalist Republican Party. Period. Absolutely. This is the white nationalist Republican Party and their uh, Lord and Savior, uh, Benedict Donald, is the head of the white nationalist party. This is why they uh, were against uh, getting rid of white supremacists and white nationalists in the military and in the police department, because these people are white supremacists and white nationalists. Don't forget when the Domestic Terrorist Prevention Act came up for a vote in the House of Representatives, I think it was 2022, and it came up after the Buffalo, New York shooting at the top supermarket, uh, all the Republicans yep. in the House of Representatives voted against the Domestic Terrorist Prevention Act, except for Adam Kinzinger, who was on the January 6th committee, and he didn't run for re-election. So, but it's important for people to connect the dots to this. This goes back to the September 2020 executive order that Donald Trump did banning diversity, equity, and and inclusion when it came to uh, the training of federal employees. That's when that started. That's even before uh, Chris Rufo came out with his tweet in, May, in March 2021 talking about how they were going to redefine critical race theory. OK, this is this. You can draw a direct line to all this. That's also connected to uh, the response that uh, Senator Tim Scott did to um, two years ago to uh, President Joe Biden's uh, State of the Union address when he said America is not a racist country. And then the next and the next line after that was uh, and I'm paraphrasing is wrong to have policies that address those historical inequities, things like this. All that's connected. So we have to understand these people are crazy. They are trying to suppress us and we have to vote them out of office. This this is all about power. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. For decades, the tobacco industry has deliberately targeted black communities and kids with marketing for menthol cigarettes. It's had a devastating impact on black health. Tobacco use claims 45,000 black lives every year. It's the number one cause of preventable death. In the 1950s, less than 10% of black smokers used menthol cigarettes. Today, it's 85%. 
Ban menthol cigarettes. Save lives. We talk about blackness and what happens in black culture. We're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com.